So I'm actually about to pull this ram completely apart. But what I'm going to actually do is replace the seals in this because it is leaking like nobody's business. Um, and there's hydraulic oil being leaking through the boat since we got it. Um, and you'll see here, it's actually really, really easy for me to I say that push the um, the cylinder rod from side to side. That's a very good indication that the seals on the piston have gone hard and they're in the collapsed state uh, and won't seal particularly well. And the lip seals in the ends are also in the similar state, so they're not actually clamping onto the rod very much. Um, they've gone hard and um, as evidence of it, lots of oil was leaking out of them. going to do is actually pull the ends off now that I've got the cylinder um, gently clamped in the vise and you can see it in the vise with my really thick rag um, soft jaw alternatives <laughs> so I don't damage the cylinder too much. Um, here is a, my special C spanner so I can actually do the job. So this uh, pin here uh, we'll go into, there's actually a drilled five millimeter hole on the underside and you'll see when I spin it around where it goes into. Connects in. And this gives me the ability to rotate this end cap. Now these end caps are not screwed on. And this is why I actually wanted to make the video to show people that there's lots of ways of making these rams happen and all the rest of it. And Harry thought it was quite cool. the way it was attached and because as a young fella I did my apprenticeship rebuilding heaps of these things I don't think much of it I say, oh, that's another end but I didn't realize actually it's quite a cool thing the way this is connected instead of being screwed on the ram is actually held on with this retainer clip it's a piece of stainless steel wire that sits in a groove in the ram cylinder and it also sits in the corresponding groove in the cylinder head. And um, basically it won't let the, the cylinder ram end pop off because the stainless steel rod is half into that into the cylinder and half into the, um, uh, the ram end. It's a little bit tricky to take out. So I need to rotate this a little bit more. Gently prise the oops, wire out as I rotate. Okay, so I've got the wire partly coming out of the hole, and now I just rotate the, um, the end of the ram here. Unwinds it out of the Ram head. It's got a little hook end. There it is. So it's just this piece of wire that is screwed or wound around the cylinder. Now I'll take the um, cylinder cap end off. So it's not actually screwing off, I'm actually just pulling it straight off. There you have it. That's the um, cylinder end cap. Lots of goobers, it's been a very long time since this, um, the seals on this thing have been changed. But you can see here, the groove that that wire sits in. And here is a little shoulder step up, which the O-ring seals on, that actually seals that end cap. Lots of crap inside of there, which there shouldn't be. Right, so now I can actually take 
the rod out and we'll have a look at the seals. All right. So this is the um, cylinder ram shaft. These are the two seals that um, push the cylinder backwards and forwards, or seal it so that this piston here um, pushes the ram in and out. This ram was in here, as you just saw. This piston here was sealed up on the inside wall of here. Now the oil goes in this hole, or in this hole. And when the oil goes in this hole, the oil will fill up this cavity, create pressure against the piston here, and actually push the ram like that, that way. Then we fill up the hydraulic ram through this hole here, the oil goes in, fills up this chamber, pushes on this seal, and the ram goes back in that way. You'll also notice that these are what we call lip seals and they're directional lip seals. You'll see that the seal has a lip that is kicking up this way and it has a small undercut under here. And as the oil pressure comes in under this undercut, it actually pushes this lip hard up against the cylinder wall, which makes the seal seal tighter against the wall. And the same thing when the oil comes this way and pressurizes the seal from the other side under the lip and pressurizes it in there. So it's very important when you're replacing seals in these things to make sure that you get your seals facing the right way. If you don't, it won't work. It's pretty simple. <laughs> now, so that stops the oil from going in this hole past the piston and out the other hole. What stops the oil from going from inside the ram to outside the ram. So when this cap was on here, there's two seals. There's one seal that seals the rod that was in here. And again, that's another lip seal, like what we saw on the um, piston. And we also have an O-ring, which seals the cap to the cylinder. So this is the O-ring. Sealed right here. For you guys that don't know the difference between a lip seal and an O-ring, here's a quick lesson. O-ring, um, looks like the letter O, and it's in a ring. Um, and it's also round in its section. This one isn't so round anymore because it's spent such a long part of its life squished in position, so it's going slightly square. It's gone quite hard. Um, and the next one to pull out is the lip seal. Now these are single lip seals in one direction only. So they're nice and simple. What it means is that we have oil pressure from this side, wanting to go from the inside to the outside. That's so so where the water want, uh, oil wants to go. So the lip of the oil seal needs to make sure that it faces in towards the direction of the oil pressure. I don't know whether you can see it in the light here, but you can just see the lip here. This, this is the lip, and you can see the oil goes in under here. Uh, oil goes in under here. When it's under here, it creates pressure against the lip, and the lip then pushes against the ramshaft and creates a seal. So I've got to get this out put a new one in. Now, when you're taking these seals out, it's very important to try and not damage this surface here. But this surface here is actually the bearing surface for the ram shaft to slide against. So this ram shaft here um, when it goes in and out, needs a bit of a bearing um, to support the, the, the ram so that when it comes out, it doesn't go bleh, or bleh, or bleh. So the um, lip seal partially holds it, but if there is a big load on the ram shaft, 
it will actually bear on this piece of uh, bronze shoulder here. Alright, so I'm going to take this other end off now. Right, so you can see the end of the wire here. I'm gonna try and, oops, gently coax this out without destroying threads. Sorry, banging the camera. Let's get it started. Boom, like that. Okay. Here's that hole that I was talking about that my spanner goes into on the other side. All right, off comes the other end. Now, I've got the O-ring in this one again, the lip seal in there again. Um, we have a much larger run-through area in the spherical bearing area than the other side, but that's because of where it's held. Yes, yeah, so I'll pull this all apart and clean it up. So I've got to take the, the seals, what we call bucket seals, off the piston here. When I take these off, I've got to be very careful that I don't mark, score, bruise, or do anything to the middle bit of the piston here. Because this bit here is the bit, it's the bearing that runs up and down the inside of the cylinder. Um, yes, the rubber seals hold it off, but when there's big loads being transferred through, this will actually touch the cylinder wall as well. Um, so I've got to be very careful that I don't touch this or score it or bruise it. So when I'm levering these old seals out, I don't put the screwdriver between this and the seal. I put it between the lower. So this is actually machined lower than this. So I can dig it out from this way, but not from this way. Right, so you saw which side of the seal I came in at it, making sure that I don't mark and bruise this side. And now I'm gonna peel this lip seal out. <laughs> right, so I'm taking this off and now note, that's the back side of the seal, all nice and flat. <clears throat> this is the pressure side of the seal. You'll see there's a groove here, and you can see the lip here. It's flat across here, it's flat across here, and then it steps up. This is the lip. This is the part of the seal that does all the work. This is the important part of the seal. This groove here is where the oil pressure comes in and presses that lip up against the cylinder wall. So, something's happened here to this, this ram at some stage. Either a previous owner or technician has um, changed seals and has made a nice little mess of the um, lower end of the, the seal groove um, where the uh, seals in, in there. Um, this has been made a mess of, but because they did it on the right side, or the less important side, not this side, this has actually been able to function perfectly fine. Um, and this sort of highlights that if you're gonna make a mess of any side of it, make a mess of this side, not this side. Try not to make a mess at all, but if you're going to, this side is more tolerant than this side. Okay, blammo, they're out. What I'm going to do is clean up. You can see there's muck under the where the seals have been sitting. It's uh, clean for assembly. The chances of things leaking are very, very low. There you go. You can see cleaning the muck out of that groove. So the new seal has a nice, smooth, clean surface to seat on. Look at that! Glamour! Here's my new seal kit.
with my new O-rings, my new bucket seals, my new lip seals. So I'm going to put these into their appropriate places, facing the right way. Um, yeah. So, <clears throat> first thing I'm going to put in is my lip seal. I'm not going to put this lip seal into this nice clean housing dry. If I try to do that, <clears throat> it'll get hung up and twisted and um, go, go a bit bad on me. So, like everything, you're going to put it in a hole. Make sure you lubricate it. So, uh, any um, petroleum based grease is good. Um, unfortunately, I have a water, water protective anti rust lubricating grease for bearings, but outboard motors, boat accessories, parts exposed for damp and salt water spray. Um, it's fine, it will melt in my um, hydraulic oil. Um, can use hydraulic oil if you haven't got any grease to um, lubricate it with but the grease is a little bit easier to deal with and get to stay where you need to and not end up super slippery and oily and everything everywhere we can try to put it together making sure my lip is facing the right way inside on this side because we've already got a shaft going through it so the lip has to be facing me and if you look it's like, oh, how am I going to get this great big thing in that little hole? Well, you just patience, talk to it nicely, and slide it on in there. Boom. Right, now you'll see in here, things are a little bit twisted up. It doesn't look so good, you know, it's a round hole and there's these great big flat bits. So just gently with my seal pick, boom found the bit that it was sort of hanging up on gave a little twiddle and boom it went in there nicely same with o-ring more lubrication slide that one into the groove oh, that's one end ready to go lip seal number two for the other side So I'm trying to get <clears throat> initiated square in the groove, which is the trickiest part. Again, looking all pear shaped. Gently relieve it so that it'll go in. Boom. Be really careful with the new seal here and the seal pick that you don't rip, tear, poke, um, and damage that, that lip. Otherwise it's gonna basically undo whatever good work you may have been doing. Ammo, like that. Now the main bucket seals. These are a bit more fun. Okay, everything nicely well lubricated. So that it slides on there nice and easy. Now, um, so if you're not familiar with the way it went on, um, make sure that you take photos or remember or write down or whatever it is, which way the lip was facing uh, on your piston. Same in here. Make sure that they go on the right way. If you put these on the wrong way, um, it's not gonna work. It's, basic, it's the basics of it. Um, so yeah. Make, make sure that you take note, remember, look at the whoops, user manual or whatever system you have for making sure that you put the lip seal back on the right way and getting it the right way. Make sure you look at it um, and confirm it's the right way. Because if you don't, all your hard work is not, it's gonna get a waste. Right, seal one. Now if I wasn't using this lubrication, particularly with putting that one on, there's lots of sharp edges that, that this lip seal had to slide over. Without any lubrication on there, you can actually cut the seals quite easily. Um, if you cut a seal, um, basically it's a bin job. 
So you can see there's lots of sharp machined edges here. You know, without the grease, it'll hang up on them and potentially cut them as it slides over. So having lubrication on there to get them on is quite important. You know, make sure it all sits in there nice and neatly. Look at that, beautiful. Okay, so we have two bucket seals, two lip seals on there. You can actually see how much higher this lip is now sticking up from what the old one was. So it's gonna press much harder against the cylinder wall. And also now you can see when the oil pressure is against here, when it, the oil pressure is in, in under that lip, that it pushes that lip hard up against the um, cylinder wall to create a tighter seal. All right, so now we're gonna go into the cylinder ram itself. Now in the cylinder ram here, can have a look. So I need to lubricate this. Blip, 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 blip. Right, now we've got this beautiful chamfer all the way around here, and then they went and machined this great big slot in here. Now this here, thankfully there's slightly radius, but it's not the best. But once the lip's in here, it's not too bad. But this area here is the danger zone for when I slide this lip seal back in. So, and the lip seal that's at most risk is the first one going in where the bucket is facing outwards as it's trying to go in. Um, so what I do is I've lifted it up slightly so that the lip is actually engaged in the bottom before the top. And then I just rotate the lip seal in and you can see it actually went in quite easily. But our lip is still sticking up here where the groove is. And I've got to very gently and carefully slide it past that, making sure it doesn't pick up. Now the second seal, oh, got my glove. Um, the second seal, the lip is actually facing the right way where it's just actually gonna flap down. So it's actually gonna be pushed down and it's not gonna try and pick it up as it goes in. So this one's at much, much lower risk of, of being cut. But still, we just gently slide it in. So, we are in. And now straight away, this ramshaft is a bit tighter in the cylinder because we've got new seals on there and they're pushing a little bit firmer against the wall. So it's actually harder to slide them in and around. On the back end here, we have our O-ring seat. So this is where the O-ring sits and seals. So we need to make sure that that's lubricated because with these O-rings, they're round. When I push it in, I don't want the O-ring to roll out or roll under or twist. I want that O-ring to stay in its natural sitting position and shape. So I need to lubricate this surface up here. With our O-ring's gonna slide over it. And again, they've machined a nice little radius on this edge here for the um, O-ring to initially slip over on the edge. But then we have a sharp shoulder here, which you've got to be a little bit careful. And then they have a step up ramp which is the final landing face with this step up is the final ramp it'll go up before it's squeezed in position to sit on the, the seal surface uh, face here so that's o-ring that's no worries it's fairly low risk um, but the lip seal going around the ramshaft is another high risk one because if we nick that lip getting it on the ram. Um, basically we can pull it all apart, start again, put a new lip seal in, because if we nick that lip seal and cut it in any way, it's a rubbish bin job, because it will leak. Um, we have a nice radius on the end of the ram shaft here, so that's, that's good. So what we've got to do is again, start from the bottom, engage it at the bottom, and gently roll the um, lip up and over this radius. I am going to keep holes aligned here so that when I am trying to get the O-ring over its shoulders and all the rest of it, all I'm doing is a small wiggle wiggle uh, movement. All right, going past all the sharp things. Boom, it's on. The O-ring has now gone up the ramp and is in its final resting place. Do that again on this other end. 
Well lubricated. A little bit higher risk at doing it this end at the threaded end because we, while we don't have a sharp, sharp edge, it is definitely still quite a square shoulder. So, bit of grease. Try not let the threads tear the uh, seal apart. Just engaging on the seal. There she goes. Right. So all the new seals done. Yep, still goes backwards and forwards. So the hook goes in the hole. it slowly runs it over and I get my right there we go now slowly goes round and round sucks the wire in so it comes up the other side and then this wire will drop in there and it goes bye bye serviced, ready to put back in the boat and we'll bleed it up and maybe go for a ride in the boat tomorrow, it'll be exciting.